Now that we've worked through our trial balance and figured out all the statements where the things should go to, we're gonna start building our statements and we're gonna start with the income statement. On this side of the screen, we have what area it is in the account. And on this side, we are going to start creating our income statement. This is company B. Yeah, very feeling very creative today. This is an income statement. So it is for the year ended December 31st, 2020. When we move on to our balance sheet, it is actually as of December 31st, 2020. So that is a distinction between income statements and balance sheets. That is because the income statement is for a period of time, whereas the balance sheet is as of a date and time. Okay, so we're going to start with sales. So our sales for the period was 300 and $89,100. Okay, sales is done. So after sales, we take out cost of goods sold. This is going to be a multi step income statement. So, sales, we have cost of goods sold over here for $230,400. So, we'll just link it right there. There's our cost of goods sold. And sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit. So that just is sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit. Next is going to be operating expenses. So our first operating expense, so our other expenses, we've got some selling expenses, investment revenue, that's going to be other administrative expenses will be operating interest is other taxes is taxes discontinued ops is separate and gain on investments is other. Okay, so our operating expenses are just going to be what we have is selling and administrative. So we'll start out with selling. Next is administrative expenses. That gives us total operating expenses. Now we're going to have other expenses and other revenues. So other stuff we have, we have Investment revenue. So let's put down investment revenue under other of 35.40. Next, let's see, interest expense. So we'll put interest expense down here. Okay, and then gain on sale of investments. So we'll put that down here. One thing to keep in mind, this was interest expense. It should actually be negative. Let's make sure that's a negative. So that's a debit balance. Interest expense was a debit balance. Otherwise, investment revenue and sales were both credits. So this, because this is because this is other positives are going to be in, income or, rev, or revenues or gains, and negatives are going to be expenses or losses. Whereas up here, it's already specified. Okay, so that's our total other. Now that allows us to calculate income from continuing operations. Income from continuing operations is going to be gross profit minus operating expenses plus other, which is a negative, but it's going to be plus that, which gives us income from continuing operations before taxes, before tax of $10,640. Okay, now we are going to take out income tax. Okay. Income taxes is $669. That's what the balance in the account is, but that's gonna be total income taxes. That's not the number we actually want. We don't want $669. We want the tax rate. Remember, for businesses, when we're, calc when we're doing financial reporting, tax is a rate and our rate is 30% right there. So we just want to basically say, okay, well, we have $10,640 before taxes times 30% gives us our taxes of $3,192. That is our income taxes. It does not matter that it does not agree to our account for income taxes because this income tax number in this case is for everything combined. Whereas this income tax number is just for income from continuing operations. There's a bunch of other little things that have income taxes assigned to them later on that we will see every time we have to do a net of tax amount from here on out gets tax, gets another piece of the taxes. Okay, so there's income taxes 
which if we take income from continuing operations before tax, we take out taxes, we come up with just flat out income from continuing operations. And that is 10 minus our tax rate or our taxes, $7,448. So this, we now have income from continuing operations, but we now need to drop our discontinued operations. Remember, we have discontinued operations up here. So we have loss from discontinued operations right there. That goes on our income statement. That is a loss. So we need to show loss from discontinued operations. So $780 is our loss from discontinued operations. However, we're going to put that as a negative. However, that needs to be tax affected. So our tax rate is 30%. So the amount after the taxes will be 70%. So we're going to just multiply that times 0.7 or 70%, which is the same thing as taking 30% away from it. So our loss from discontinued operations is reported net of tax. I'll type that in here so that we kind of remember. Loss from discontinued operations net of taxes is $546. Now that gives us consolidated net income. $6,902 is our consolidated net income. Now that is consolidated, but it does not all belong to the shareholders of company B. Some of it belongs to non-controlling interests. So non-controlling interests, we talked about in an earlier lecture, non-controlling interests means that there are subsidiaries in which uh, essentially company B does not have a 100% ownership. There are minority shareholders that have some right to the earnings of that subsidiary. They get pulled out of consolidated net income through the line item called income attributable to non-controlling interest. We know that from other information is $970 equals uh, 900 oops equals $970, but we have to tax effect that at 30%. So we take out 30%. So there we multiply it times 0.7 gives us the what's left over, which will be $679, which after we take out non-controlling interest, we end up with net income attributable to company B shareholders. And that is minus six, 6902 minus 679 gives us $6,223 is net income attributable to company B shareholders. There is our income statement. We have taken the trial balance accounts that we need. We have placed them on the income statement and we can now move on to preparing our other statements. With that, have a great day and God bless.